Hi, I'm Ruth. And I'm Brenton. Welcome to Spectrum today. Ruth, we've got two great guests, and today we're going to start off with uh, someone who's familiar to a lot of our viewers, Steve Stucker. He's going to be talking to us about Beds for Kids and some other areas of ministry that he's involved with. Who else do we have? We also have as a guest Diane Christensen, and she's with the Bernalillo County Extension Service, who always share great information. So you're not going to want to miss a minute of these two great interviews. Stay with us. We will be right back. We're so pleased to have with us today Steve Stucker, a friend of so many of us right here in the uh, local community. Steve, welcome back. I, Thank you. It's been a little while, but I think the last time you were here, you were uh, getting ready to, to step away from the, the television business. And I did it. Finally did it. I can't, I can't <laughs> believe it. It doesn't seem like it's the same without you, but tell us a little bit. What's been going on for the last six months since you made that transition? Well, you know, I, uh, I really felt God calling me to, to leave television and to do full-time ministry. And uh, boy, be careful what you ask for. You know, it's just, uh, it's been crazy, a lot of fun, kind of hectic, but I'm, I'm doing a wide variety of things. What I'm not doing is getting up at 2.20 in the morning anymore. <laughs> well, I bet you don't miss that. That, I, that is early, isn't I, it? I don't, I don't miss it. I, you know, a lot of times I'll pop awake anyway and then go back to sleep. I tell people I'm being a lazy bum and sleeping in until 4.30 or 5 in the oh, morning. Wow. I bet it takes a little <laughs> bit of time for you to kind of get a, 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 just acquainted with a, a different sleep rhythm, but that, well, that's yeah, interesting. Yeah, and, I, and, I'm, and I'm not there yet. And the other thing is that just about every day has been different. I'm on a, a different schedule. I'm still on, on staff at, at church, at New Covenant Church, although I've, I've taken a little bit of a reduced role there. Okay. And they're allowing me to be gone two Sundays a month to go to other churches and preach. And so I've been traveling around the state with uh, invitations and really loving that. And uh, still doing my my beds ministry, beds for kids. Well, we'll maybe highlight several of those things today. But you uh, have also been inducted to some Hall of Fames, oh. more than one. I understand <laughs> three, isn't that right? Oh uh, yeah. Tell us you how, know. where you made the Hall of Fame. <laughs> well, you know, it, it's been so interesting. It's satisfying and 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 it's gratifying. But it comes at a time in my life when I've realized that as nice as it is, it really doesn't matter. God doesn't care. And I, maybe I didn't get it earlier because he knew I couldn't handle it. I'm not sure. But I, I was inducted into the New Mexico Broadcasters Hall of Fame Wonderful. In, in August. And in October, I was uh, put into the uh, Albuquerque International Balloon Fiesta Hall of Fame. That makes sense. <laughs> and uh, the one that really uh, knocked me out that made me laugh so hard uh, just this last weekend I was inducted into my high school Hall of Fame up in Council Bluffs, Iowa. Wow. And uh, gosh, I, uh, I I had to laugh at that one. It's like, well, 50 years has evidently faded their memory <laughs> quite a bit of uh, who I was back then. Well, tell us a little bit about an, an area of ministry that you have uh, gotten involved with called an NCC Compassion Ministry. What is that all about? Yeah, well, New Covenant Church uh, does what we call compassion ministry. A lot of churches would call it benevolence. And we really try to, to hone in and focus on our special families within the fellowship. We try to help people that will come by. We're on a, on a main street, and so we get you know a lot of strangers, a lot of people that we don't know stop by asking for help, and we do whatever we're able to. But our real focus is on the people that we can draw into our family, get them to, to come to church, to be part of the ministries overall, Certainly. and get to know them. And, and we really want to speak into their lives with, uh, you know, most importantly, the Word of God, with, with prayer and with counseling. But we want to step up 
up and, and, and put some skin in the game. So we have a, a food pantry and, and we invite them to come by every Sunday in between services and, and get, you know, bags of groceries. We have fresh and, uh, and, and, and frozen and, and, and boxed foods all together. We'll um, help them usually with a tank of gas if they need it. So it's easier for them to get to work in school. And we've got some volunteers who help them with their vehicles. We'll, we'll help That's them great. obtain vehicles. And you know, when you're a, a single mom with four kids or you're a grandmother raising two disabled granddaughters on your own, a battery or a tire going out can be devastating. Absolutely. And a lot of these families are, you know, two, three days of missed work away from being out on the street. And so we want to be there for them like family with those kinds of things. And um, it's a lot of work, but it, it's really um, something that, that I have a big heart for. And I'm blessed that this is provided for by the family at New Covenant. It's not part of our regular budget. We take up a special offering once a month, and that's, that's how it's funded. Now, you've been involved with and, of course, are the director of the CEO of Beds for Kids. That's probably something that more people are familiar with than maybe any of the other activities in sure. terms of benevolence and, and compassion that you're involved with. Tell us how that, that ministry is operating and how it's going. Well, it's, um, it's going very well. It keeps me extremely busy. I don't have a lot to do with the day-to-day, um, but we're still very, very active. And I'm overall in charge of the two part-time employees that we have and about 75 volunteers. That's a large volunteer staff. It is, it is. And we have about 15 to 20 who are active every week. And wow. the rest of them will jump in either once a month when we do our big event or uh, with the annual things like we have coming up here in the next couple of weeks when we need 30, 40, 50 people to come out. And why we, is it the next couple of weeks? Going well, we, um, we jump up for the holiday season. Okay. Our, our goal is to place 200 people in free beds every month. And we're up over 18,000 people that we've placed so far. That's so amazing. the need is huge. It's, it's beautiful to have a number like that, but it's very sad to me also that we yeah. live in a state where there's, where there's so much poverty. And, and it's not just financial, but it's spiritual too. It's we true. pray with every family that we, that we give beds to. We try to follow up and, and, and to become part of their lives. But um, just, you know, staying busy with that, raising the funds, getting the word out, making sure that that we're getting the donations that we need. And with this holiday season, we bump it up. We really shoot for 600 people placed between the beginning of November and Christmas. And we've got a couple of big donors stepping up. Giving Tuesday is coming up. And American Home Furnishings and Mattress is donating 100 brand new mattresses. Uh, about a week after that, we've got another local business, a dwelling design, uh, Matthew Avetta, uh, his wife Bridget, and their their business. Um, they're they're donating twenty five thousand dollars to us That's to uh, to be able to go to work Some and make Christmas hearts. special. Really are they really are, and you know we get we get a lot of. Um, support from people that go on our website and they'll sign up to donate $10, $25, $50 a month. And, sure. and that's really our lifeblood. And the amazing thing for me is the way that God has provided through all of this. I don't have the money to support it. it I run a really tight ship. We're, we're careful with our money and uh, try to be very good stewards. But before we give anything away, it costs about $65,000 a year just to keep the doors open. Oh, yeah. So we have to raise all the money and then go over and above that so that we can provide beds for these these families. And uh, it's been sweet to see the Lord uh, come through in amazing ways. I call it connecting the dots, these businesses, individuals, and yet God people is that come together. That. He, he really is. is. Uh, yeah. Amazing if we're willing to, to help us and and uh, to be able to do the things that we can't do. Now, you are also speaking. I was down in southern New Mexico, down in, uh, in Rio de Oso a few weeks ago, and saw your name on the sign, said, hey, this weekend, you know, <laughs> Steve Stucker, tell us, wh wh yeah. are you doing a lot of traveling and speaking at different congregations? Yeah, yeah, I am. And, you know, that's one of the things that um, I, I, I felt like I wanted to do, but I wasn't sure if I was... Um, qualified and and I had two two wonderful men of God who've been mentors to me for quite a long time Chip Chip Lusco and Don Compton came to me individually uh, not even talking to the other one about six months apart and said Steve you need to be out 
teaching and preaching and, and, and using your gift. And so I just set it out there and I'll go wherever I'm invited. New Covenant allows me to be gone, to stay on staff with them, but to be out traveling, uh, teaching, preaching at other churches two Sundays a month. That's wonderful. And um, got, to, got to be with uh, you know Pastor John down there in Redusso, beautiful fellowship, and it was an anniversary for them. Oh, wow. they, had, they had just come back from a sabbatical, and it, I, I think it was like 35 years they had been there. Oh, and uh, I've been, you know, um, I've been to Berlin twice, I've been to Farmington three times, and I have another one right after the first year. I've been uh, to Pastor Danny at uh, Way Truth Life Ministries in Grand a couple of times. Um, You're all over. I got to go to Santa Fe and teach at Blaze Fellowship and uh, great, great was in Las Vegas, in yes. Las Vegas yesterday. And uh, I've got Española lined up and uh, I'm, just, I'm just excited. I'm also trying to go to um, the places where they really can't seem to get guest speakers okay. or, or, or guest teachers. When I'm going to Farmington on January 7th, I'm going to teach at Calvary up there. And then that night, I'm going to the Navajo Nation and I'm going to a chapter house and I'm going to preach there. You know, one of the things I think that we're learning is that if you allow God to use you, He will take you to the places that maybe surprise you and use you in new areas. And we could talk longer, but we've run out of time. Steve, great to catch up. Thank you for what you're doing in our community through the ministries and, Thank and you organizations so much. you're involved with. I really appreciate the opportunity and God bless. Watch the Daystar Network 24 hours a day on KAZQ 32.5. Well, we want to say thank you so much to all of our partners um, for joining with us on this journey and for being a part of what we've been trying to do as far as fundraising for the station. Many of you have joined. We have new partners, but I want to encourage each of you, if you have, um, if you have a desire to become a partner with Alpha Omega Broadcasting, be sure to visit our website at kazq32.org. You can give safely online. You can also set up a certain day of the month that you would like that donation to go through, and that's probably the easiest way to do it. If you'd like to call the station, you can do that at 505-884-8355, extension 101, to speak to someone. If you have the donation in hand and you'd like to mail it, don't know where to mail it for the first time, you can send it to Alpha Omega Broadcasting at 4501 Montgomery Boulevard, Northeast Albuquerque, New Mexico, 87109. You know, we've seen some wonderful things happening here at the station. We made some programming adjustments in the summertime in about June. And as we've been moving toward the fall, we have seen more than a doubling of viewership. People who, Isn't that wonderful? Uh, and I'm not, that's not according to me, that's according to a, a group that measures those things. So we're really excited about that. We also have seen, and we're thankful for this, some uh, tremendous uh, progress toward our goal. We talked about in July and August that we needed to raise $20,000. Well, as we were looking at where we are, we've raised about $12,500 of that. That's significant. Mm -hmm. uh, but we still have about $7,500 that needs to be raised before the end of the year. It's really important because this is for repairs, this is for equipment that had broken and just some operational deficits. So do your best today. Uh, we need another 75 donors who can give that $100 donation or maybe you can give a $500 donation or a $1,000 donation and help us get this off of our, of uh, this burden off of us. We would really appreciate your assistance. So do your very best and we know that together God is going to enable us to meet this goal of this other $7,500 Thank you for your support. Watch Jimmy Swagger and the Sun Life Network 24 hours a day on KAZQ 32.3. We're privileged to have with us today Diane Christensen, who is a family and consumer sciences agent with the New Mexico State University's Bernalillo County Extension Program in Albuquerque or Bernalillo County. That's a big title you have there, It's a there, very Diane. long title, yes. Do you have to have two sides to your business card? I'm yes. just wondering. We have an extra large. <laughs> oh, that's good. That's good. Well, tell us a little bit. I mean, we've had the privilege of having you here on Spectrum before, but a lot of folks may not know much about the Bernalillo County Extension Program and what you guys do for New Mexico State University. Tell us a little bit about yourself, and, and then I think we're going to talk a little bit today about a new program, aren't we? Yes called Pearls, yeah. Wonderful. So Extension is such a great um, 
thing for the community. And I think a lot of people maybe aren't aware of what Extension does, but it's actually been around since Abraham Lincoln's time. He actually wow. created it. And uh, we do a lot of free programming around food, nutrition. Um, in general, that's my area. I do um, diabetes prevention and management and uh, wellness programs, but we also have 4-H and we also do agricultural kinds of things. So a big variety of things happen at Extension. Well, let's talk a little bit about this new program that's called PEARLS. I bet it stands for something. Yes. So tell us, what does it stand for? <laughs> program to Encourage Active, Rewarding Lives. Okay. Yeah. Now, as we've come through the pandemic, you know, I think we're pretty much post-pandemic now. We're probably almost four years past yes. that big declaration date that happened back in 20. 20. Um, mm -hmm. wh what are you seeing that's, that's become a need as you're thinking about health and wellness? Just It, it appears to me that in older adults, um, maybe they're having a bit of trouble getting back to maybe um, social relationships they had before. Um, I think we got entrenched in staying home and getting, getting themselves out. I've even seen it in myself. You know, I've had to kind of push myself to get back to, you know, um, having people over and doing things and um, that kind of thing. So I've noticed that as a pastor. I, mm -hmm. I've noticed that, you know, it took a long time to get people back to church, yes. but not just that. Getting people to socialize and them saying, you know, I just am struggling, mm -hmm. wanting to do that. I don't know if it's a fear or we made some bad habits. It could be a little bit of both. Mm -hmm. So as people have tended to isolate more, what happens to folks in those situations? They, I would guess mm -hmm. loneliness. Yeah, loneliness. And I think they might um, experience some um, depressive symptoms. I know I have. You know, sometimes I find myself waking up thinking, oh, not another day. And then I think, what is wrong with me? But um, that's where Pearls, I think, is going to be a great program because it just offers some self-management tools for people to help them when they're feeling that way. Now, what are some symptoms? You know, if someone's uh, sharing with us on the program today and they're thinking, well, huh, maybe I do feel a little different uh, mm -hmm. in the last little while, what are some symptoms of depression, symptoms of, of folks that might be struggling with their mental outlook? Yeah, I think, and again, I've experienced these as well, just um, kind of little or no interest in doing anything, um, being excessively tired, low energy, um, feeling sad um, um, and, um, and lonely perhaps. Um, just look at my uh, sleep disturbances is another one if your sleep is, is not going well. Uh, another one is feeling bad about yourself, being very negative about yourself. Um, and concentration problems, that was an interesting mm. one to me. This one is interesting as well, moving slowly and speaking excessively slowly. And then also thoughts of self-harm. Boy, the speaking excessively slowly is not me. So I, I, <laughs> I guess at least that symptom I don't have to worry about. But I, you know, it seems like those things, as you run a list, and I'm sure it's not every one of those right. things. It's yes. probably certain of, of those things. Mm -hmm. How many of those things are differ from just getting older? Right. I mean, you know, yes. people I think do get more tired as they have a as they age. Yes. So how do you know? Well, am I am I just is this normal or is this abnormal? How, how do you kind of distinguish? Well, I'll be honest, I've been dealing with that, too, in my own life. It, I think it's important just to listen to your body, okay. you know, because sometimes you feel physically tired and then sometimes you feel mentally tired. And I think there's two kinds of tired. Your program, Pearls, how is it structured? How do you connect people with resources? And what, are, what, are, what is the real goal of this, uh, well, this opportunity? It's an unusual program for extensionists because most of the times we deal with groups of people. We do a lot, lot of community education. But this is a one-on-one -on -one program where your facilitator meets with you once a week mm. and um, teaches you the self-management tools. And, and then you integrate it into your own life and you work with that. So you meet eight times, eight weeks, and then the facilitator checks back with you once a month for three to four months just to, um, for continued support. I noticed that you use the word facilitator, so you're mm -hmm. not really dealing with a counseling setting. This is more of someone giving you tips and, yes. and kind of follow up on how are those tips working? Is that, is that the concept? Yes, it's very, we're not counselors, nor are okay. we diagnosing depression. We're just observing perhaps some depressive symptoms and giving people some tools 
to help them. I think it's interesting that as one of uh, the extension programs that you provide there for uh, Bernalillo County, that you're identifying that this is, uh, I don't want to say rampant, but I guess it's more common maybe than it yes. was in days gone by. And so this is something that we're kind of guarding against, hedging against, isn't it? Trying to say, hey, you know, these are some things you should watch for uh, uh, if, if you are encountering, you know, the excessive uh, fatigue or, you know, you are speaking more slowly or maybe you're starting to withdraw. Mm -hmm. What are some signs of things and what are some things you can do to help? Now, you said it's eight weeks, so it's yes. not like a one and done. You're, you're going to continue following with yes. people for a, a season of time. Yeah, total about 19 weeks is the program. So um, we meet once a week for eight weeks and then follow up monthly. All right. Are there tools that you give them uh, that say, hey, here's some things that you should do uh, in addition to the tips? What are some of your tools? Yeah, um, one of the great ones, it sounds simple, but I have found it to be very helpful, is problem solving. It's a, um, teaching people how to solve problems and brainstorm solutions. I think a lot of times people get overwhelmed by specific problems and they just kind of stay in this negative loop. And so it's really helpful if you can help them to teach them how to move forward and find some ways to solve those problems. Interesting that as mm -hmm. we're entering the uh, Thanksgiving time of year, th th that's really a practical thought, isn't it? We have yes. to kind of change the mindset yes. of uh, what we're thinking about because it, it, it doesn't take long. Those thoughts become verbalized yes. and uh, we begin to act on those things mm -hmm. that we're talking about pr yeah. pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. When does the program begin? Is it is it moving? Is Pearls actually up and running or is it something that's coming soon? Yes, we're just about done training 10 facilitators and they're um, across the northern New Mexico counties. And so um, we're going to be launching it in January and February of 2024. So um, if a person is interested, um, we have a screening process that we'll go through to okay. see if the program is a good fit for their needs. Um, but they can um, reach out to, to me at Bernalillo County Extension, and I'd be happy to direct them to someone in their area. Great. So the information is on the screen. And of course, many of you uh, who are, are sharing with us today may be outside of the Bernalillo County area, the Albuquerque area, but there are additional extension programs throughout all of the counties of New yes. Mexico. Mm -hmm. And you mentioned that the northern New Mexico counties are, are the ones that are predominantly uh, going to be working on this program right away. Is that right? Yes, initially they are. Um, we were really fortunate. This program um, was brought here by the administration of community living and um, the New Mexico Diabetes Advisory Council, which I'm on the board for, received a $600,000 grant. And so that's how we were able to bring this program to New Mexico. Well, that's wonderful. Mm -hmm. And, you know, especially, do you find that there's a, a, an age group of people who are battling some of these symptoms or maybe an initial uh, circumstances that might surround mm -hmm. depression more than others? Yes, I think um, it's targeted really for people 50 on up. I think as we age, um, you know, we have brain changes, some of those kinds of things, and, um, and depressive symptoms can creep up. Interestingly, um, in another class that I teach, um, middle-aged men have the highest incidence of suicide. Wow. And so, you know, that's... That's telling, I think, that it is. Um, we do face some, some struggles as we age. Well, I think we do have to realize that the event of uh, COVID and the pandemic mm -hmm. was, was a very uh, shaking event. I mean, it was something that was, had, had long-term impacts probably beyond what yes. we initially even thought. You know, most mm -hmm. of us thought, well, a couple of weeks and we'll be past it. A couple of weeks turned into months and mm -hmm. months turned into almost more than a year of really serious disruptions. So now we're really kind of mopping up some of those problems, aren't we? Yeah. That, that may have emerged. Yeah. All right. Well, on the screen, there's a contact information. You can get in touch with Diane Christensen, who is a family and consumer science agent for the Bernalillo County Extension Service from New Mexico State University. And of course, there are other extension programs in other counties as well. But she can direct you to those. Thanks for being with us. Thank you. Thanksgiving week, let's look at being thankful. And we're going to go to a passage of scripture. It might not seem initially to deal with Thanksgiving, but it gives us a great key. Genesis chapter 24, verses 1 through 3. Sure. 
So it says, Abraham was now a very old man and the Lord had blessed him in every way. One day Abram said to his oldest servant, the man in charge of his household, take an oath by putting your hand under my thigh. Swear by the Lord, the God of heaven and earth, that you will not allow my son to marry one of these local Canaanite women. There's three things I want us to see. First of all, it declares very specifically that the Lord had blessed Abraham in every way. Now he's older, okay? mm -hmm. he, he's getting older and he's moving through life. But God's blessings were upon him. And as he, he identifies the blessings, that's the first thing, identify the blessings, he sees those blessings really going in two directions. He looks backwards and he says, look what God has done. Mm. God has blessed me financially, but God's also fulfilled one of his great promises to me, which is giving me a son, the son of the yes. promise, which was Isaac. But mm -hmm. he didn't stop at looking backwards. And I'd encourage you to look back at the blessings of God, but also to look forward to what blessings God has in your future. Mm -hmm. Because he looks and he says, you know what? My son needs to be blessed. And because yes. of that, I need to take action to help him be blessed as we move toward the future. Isn't that good? That's good. And he also remembered the promise of God, right? And so yeah. he's like, how's this going to happen? My son needs a wife. That's right. And so uh, I, I thought that was really good. Another thing that struck me was that he um, went to someone who was trusted. He just didn't ask anybody to help him. Mm -hmm. It was his oldest trusted. and trusted servant, servant friend, right? No, that he knew he could too. trust. Yeah, it's important for us to look to people that we know love God, serve God, uh -huh. and th that hear the voice of the Lord. Amen. Well, this Thanksgiving season, don't just look backwards, although you should. You should take account for all the good things mm -hmm. that God has done. But look forward. How can you speak blessing into the life of someone, maybe a family member or a friend? Ruth, one of the things I shared with our congregation recently is a sermon my dad preached many years ago. And he talked about the fact that oftentimes we wait too long. We don't mm. tell people what a blessing they are. Yeah. Oh, we eulogize them at their funeral, but we've never told them while they were alive the blessing that they were and how we were thankful for them. Take advantage of that while you have time to do That's it. That's good. Yeah. Amen. Thanks for being with us. Have a wonderful Thanksgiving week. God bless you.